All right, guys, Jack Spierko here with another update. Um, this is the uh, from the last video, the promised uh, indoor aquaponic system is going to be basically a holdover tank and a tank to grow out tilapia during the cold part of the year because we'll have heaters in it. And, of course, we can shut this big old door here because, again, if we put them into that system as babies right now, they'll be good as dead. But if we can grow them for three or four months before they go in that system, we have a big jump start for the year. And uh, we're going to do that in here. But I'm actually doing this for a mul multitude of reasons. Um, number one, I, I've wanted to show you how simple aquaponics can be for a long time. And I've wanted to give you basically the information so you can realize that a, a, a kit to build aquaponics can be had at like Tractor Supply Company. The whole kit, everything that you need can be found right there. Though you'll probably do better buying like the PVC fittings and stuff like that at uh, like Home Depot or Lowe's. So right here is all you would need to do aquaponics. And you could do up to four of those beds or a couple other options I'll talk about. Uh, it's not ready to go yet. I need to get some stuff. I'm going to be going out today and then I got a Christmas party going on. So uh, I'm going to go get the stuff so I can finish it in the morning and get the media in it all. But I figured this was actually a good point to stop because you can see how the entire system works here and how simple this could be. All right, so this is a 300-gallon Rubbermaid tank. It's the kind of tank that I talked about last time. One of the things I want to get is a fitting to go in the bottom there so I can put a nozzle on it with a hose bib so that when it comes time in the spring to drain this thing, instead of trying to pump the water out, just take a garden hose, run it right out there to one of my swales, open it up, boom, you know, drain it way, way down, net the fish out really easily because at that point there'll be hardly any water in there, put them in their new homes, and then put this away for the year. Right? So that's, that's what I want to do. But I want to show you how, if you have a space, those 4x4s four that that tank is sitting on are 8 foot long. So less than 8 foot by 8 foot, what you could do. You could put two of these tanks on the back of it, and that would be actually a really good uh, start to your system for your, your grow beds. These are actually pretty daggone big. Now, you see I have mine centered, but if you were doing two, just with two 4x4s, four you could put... You know, bring them out to the side a little bit. You could put two of them on the back. That would leave all of this water open. You could do a great huge rafting bed there. Then your water's covered. You're not going to have any problems. You've got shade back here. Fish still get some light, but you're going to have no, low algae and things like that. Right, Lucy Lou? That's Lucy Lou. Um, so you could do that. The other thing you could do really easily is take two more 4x4s, four, four bring them over here, and you could have four of these ebb and flow beds. One, two, three, four. One of them could be, let's say, a shallow wicking bed. One of them could be, uh, a, a, a not a shallow wicking bed, a shallow um, deep water bed. Let's say you don't want to do deep water down there, you want to do it up here, have some more flow. So you set one up, you set your raft on it, you set an overflow point, boom, it's, it's running. The other one could be um, a constant flow wicking bed, or a constant flow um, media bed, and then you could have two ebb and flows. You could have four ebb and flows, you could do it however you want, and all you need is eight four by fours, four of these tanks, one of these tanks, and people are going to say, but IBCs cost less. You know what an IBC is? An IBC is a tank that sits this high up. We've got to start cutting it, dealing with steel cages, thin walls, making punctures in it. You know what you have to do with this? You drill one hole for these tanks right here, and you throw a bulkhead in it. That's the whole thing. You're done. You're done. Now, if you want to do some other things, we can. But I want you to show you something else. You see where the, the height of this bed is? Look at this. This is beautiful. This is, this is at my waist. So working on my plants... They're right here. If I have a, a, a raft bed down here, they're right here. You see how simple this is. Now, we could take that, come out here to one of these, 100-gallon tank, 250s. Boom, boom, opening in the center for your fish. One pump, done. That could do you two of those grow beds, and that's plenty of water for two grow beds. However, I'm back to this again. Let's say that's what you wanted to start with. Big tank couple media beds, some rafting, fine. As long as you're on a level surface, later on you decide, I want a couple wicking beds. Build a rack out to the side, throw two of those 100-gallon tanks on it. There you go. There's your, uh, there's your deep, deep, uh, deep, deep wicking beds. If you wanted more ebb and flow, build a rack, put a return line in. You could go out. You could put 20, 30 of these things if you really wanted to on this much water. Uh, I wouldn't probably do that, but definitely a dozen. Let me tell you something. If you've got a dozen of these running, you can't, you can't eat all the food you get for one family out of a dozen of those. And it could all run off of one of these. Let's say you did decide, you know what? I really do want more water. I want to grow more fish. It's already plumbed. 
buy another one, sit it right next to it. Make sure you put your fitting on there, like I said, so you can drain it from the bottom. That way, all you gotta do is plumb it over, open the thing, they'll start filling up, equalize, add water, done. Expandable infinitely. So that's why I love these tanks for doing this kind of work. Let's say you want that to be a little bit lower. Let's say you wanna do some of these wicking beds. Because if we put a wicking bed right here, obviously the top of the wicking bed is gonna be more up like here, like at shoulder height. That's okay, but if we want it lower, as long as you can dig a hole where you're going, put that a foot in the ground. That lowers the whole system a foot. That'll give you insulation to the ground. If you don't want to dig a hole, but you want to do that, take some uh, eight foot four by fours, build a box around it, fill it in with dirt. It's, it's so simple. Leave yourself a way that you can service the bottom. It's still expandable. You could build another one later if you wanted to. So let's talk about actual aquaponics though for a second and what we're doing here. Since I'm only doing one bed with this, um, and I could do two or three even with this pump. It's a pretty small pump. These are little pumps. They sell for about 40 bucks at Home Depot. I use a much more powerful uh, cast iron Lanchez uh, pump for my bigger systems, and I've standardized on that everywhere. In here, with little fry falling around, they'd be dead. they get sucked up into it. Uh, if you wanted to use a heavier pump in here, take a five-gallon bucket, drill a bunch of holes in it, cut a hole in the lid, put the pump inside it, and let the water come in through there, and you would prevent your fish from getting sucked into your dirty water pump. You'll notice the pump's on a cinder block. That's going to get it up off the ground. Your cleanest water is in the center of your column. Your dirtiest water is on the top and the bottom, so you want your pump in the center. Um, I've got some scrap three-quarter pipe around here, so that's what I built this on. I've got an overflow right there, and that's going to cause agitation to the surface, so I'll figure out how much pressure I need here and use the extra pressure to agitate the surface there. So that'll do that. If I, want, if I decide to put rafting beds here and it's causing a problem, it's all dry fit. We'll just rotate it under here so that it pushes the uh, agitation back there. This is the actual mechanism by which a bell siphon works. We've got a uh, three-quarter inch uh, bulkhead. I'd probably normally do one inch in these, but uh, I had three-quarter equipment laying around. It'll work. It's sufficient. But a larger system, I would want to use one inches in these. A little bit more reliable on your uh, bell siphon. Uh, this sets the height of the water. You can see that down there, I'm actually going to have to add a piece of pipe. You want a little bit of pipe to pull, and I can control the direction that water discharges as well. And this is your entire bell siphon. No moving parts. Nothing moves up and down. I think a lot of people think like these things move around. They don't. All this is going to do is just going to sit right there, just like that. That's the whole thing. It'd work like that. I'll talk back about the other part in a second. But what happens is the water starts to fill up. It gets to that overflow point. starts overflowing. As it begins to overflow, it creates a negative pressure vacuum in here, and the water actually starts getting pulled up and flowing down. And it pulls up, pulls up, pulls up, until it gets to the bottom. It hits one of those holes, one little bit of air gets in there, boop, breaks the siphon, water starts filling up again. So that's it for functionality. Then we have this media excluder, a piece of four inch pipe. We had scrap laying around, threw it on a chop saw, cut some slats in it. You can do that with a skill saw, but be very careful, you'll get a lot of kickback. It would be better to maybe clamp it down and use two hands on the saw than try to hold it and use one hand because they will kick on you on this. Set your depth on your skill saw and then you can control how far you go in but with a chop saw, really, really easy. That goes like this. And that way when you put all your lava rock and stuff in there, it's not gonna fall in and get in the way of your siphon working. That's it. So this is gonna get filled up. I need to get a three quarter inch valve for right here and then I'll have the ability to control the flow and that's it. Up, down, up, down. Can't fail. No float switch on the pump. Why? It doesn't matter if it, if it fails, it fails. It's not going to be pumping water somewhere else. If I were pumping water like out here to a stand, then I would want a float switch on it. So if there was a problem here and it started leaking and it started dropping a level there, it would kill the pump so we didn't pump all the water out. But given that we're here, if it, if it, what's it going to do? It's going to go right back here. So there's just no place for it to go. There's no need for a float switch, so I'm not going to have the added expense. The other side is the higher up you bring your pump, sooner or later, the water's going to get down there. You'll burn your pump up um, if you don't have a float switch, but at least you won't pump your system dry. That's another reason to keep it up. But I am really a fan of this. I Like I said, this is like a roll-your-own kit. And you could do, you know, you could use these big ones. Or you could, these are 14-gallon uh, concrete mixing trays. These are 12 bucks, where these are like 60 you could use these too. We use these a lot in the system. I'm going to be building some out with the 21 gallon ones that are a little bigger uh, coming soon. And I'm going to be putting a piece of all thread here to reinforce these sides with some fender washers and some sealant. And I'm going to actually attach two by fours to the bottom using uh, tough tech screws. I'll show you what those look like real quick. 
these guys here. So we'll go in like that to the two by fours on the inside and they've got a pretty good seal already, but we'll go ahead and just caulk them up real good with uh, just some silicon sealant. And uh, you know, we shouldn't have any leaks from that. And that should make those a lot more rigid because we have not found anything that's a bang for your buck better nose. But if I was gonna make that do the same thing, you drill a hole, bulkhead in, bell siphon on, excluder, fill it up. This is it. Everybody wants to make like this stuff's complicated. People are paying thousands of dollars for courses in this. This is it. You could take the thousand dollars you pay for a course and you could build this with 10 of those on it and make more food than you could ever eat. We'll have more for you coming soon. And uh, this will be a fun project. And I think as we get it built out, your kind of bells will go off in your head. Well, this is what I could do with this because the odds that you're going to do the same thing I'm doing with are pretty low that you're going to have it out here overwintering plants and fish and stuff like that. Um, but I'm going to have to risk my temptation to use this for something else because after this year, I already lost all my floating vegetation. I'm going to have little different raft systems in here. And this is going to become when, uh, when it's going to get really cold and everything's going to die. I bring some of my different floating plants in here to keep them alive through the winter. And uh, got that nice thing right there. Look at that. We can just put some grow lights on there for some extra light and we're good to go. Catch up with you later, guys.